Hello, I am Arun Gitu, and in this video, we will discuss why we need two methods for calculating safety stock. First, analytical method helps us arrive at the exact answer using formulae. The correctness of the answer depends on whether the assumptions made when deriving the formula are valid when applied to a particular scenario. Uh, more on this slide, more on this in the next slide. In simulation, uh, we create a model and then in a risk-free manner, observe the interactions within the model and draw a conclusion about its behavior under different inputs. We shall see a simulation in Excel here and then draw conclusions or conclusions on what should be the safety stock for providing a certain service level. Before we get into analytical method and simulation, let us first understand why safety stock is needed. Safety stock is needed to smooth out the inevitable bumps in demand and or the inevitable delays in getting supplies and provide the customer a level of service that they expect. On one side, having too much safety stock is expensive. And on the other side, having too little safety stock, we will not be able to provide the customer with the targeted service level. So it's important to have as little safety stock as possible to provide the customer with the targeted service level. Often for calculating safety stock, we use uh, this formula, which is on the screen. This formula will correctly calculate safety stock if the underlying assumptions of normality are met by distribution of demand and distribution of lead time. What do we mean when we say that demand is normally distributed? If we were to plot a graph of periodic demand values on the x-axis and frequency of these demand values on the y-axis, we would get a balanced bell-shaped curve, which we are familiar with. Uh, more formally, a normal distribution is when the mean, mode, and the median values are all the same and skewness and kurtosis are both zero. Uh, Shapiro-Wilk test of normality is often used to check if a range of values are normally distributed. And we will use that here in the Excel simulation to show that uh, the data in the simulation is not normal. So if the normality assumptions are not met, then how do we calculate uh, safety stock? We can use the trial and error method, but that involves risk. But simulation, takes this risk away. We can see what happens in our model world in a risk-free manner, assuming that we have taken into consideration the important details. For calculations of safety stock, the important details are uh, distribution of uh, customer demand and distribution of lead time. So here we have an Excel uh, simulation of non-normal demand and lead time. Uh, we are using variable order time and fixed order quantity inventory policy. Uh, we have lots of information here. So let's go through them one by one. Demand uh, shown here is zero for 20% of the time. And if there is demand, it is at least 40. It does not exceed 70. And on most periods, the demand is around 50. And so we have used a triangular distribution for it. Uh, lead time is uh, mostly four periods, 70% of the time. 10% of the time, it is three. And 15% of the time, it takes more than the usual four, and that is five. 
and then 5% of the time it takes uh, six periods for us to uh, receive the goods once we place the PO from the supplier. Hello, test. Hello. Now uh, let us look at the simulation data itself. Um, period E1, which is the beginning, we have a beginning inventory of 250, which we just uh, decided to set the same as the RO or P amount, which is 250. We had a random demand of 47. This number generated randomly using these distribution characteristics. And therefore, the ending inventory was 203, which is 250 minus 47. And because the ending inventory was less than the ROP amount, we created an order for the EOQ amount, which is 225. Now, these two values were just uh, picked based on my experience running the uh, normal uh, assumption uh, ROP and EOQ values uh, using a somewhat similar distribution. So I just picked these numbers up uh, at random. You, you, the, the point here is we can try different values to get to a service level of whatever the target is. So. In our uh, simulation here, I have set a target of 95%. So for 95% service level, an ROP of 250 and an EOQ of 225 works. So um, that was an aside. So let's go back here. So for period one, we have 250 as the beginning inventory, which is the same as the ROP, demand of 47 randomly generated. Uh, therefore, we end up with uh, 203 ending inventory and because that is less than the ROP, we create an order for 225 and send it to the supplier and that order of 225 is based on the EOQ value here. And when we created the order, uh, we randomly decided based on these characteristics that it will take four weeks and therefore uh, we popped in the value of 225 as quantity received four weeks from now. So four intervening weeks or periods are one, two, three, four. And then in the beginning of the fifth period, it is available. Let's now get to uh, period two. Uh, period two, the beginning inventory is 203, which is the ending inventory of period one. Uh, we have a no demand, uh, which is because of this distribution, right? 20% of the time, we could have no demand. It so happens that in period two, we do not have any demand. The ending inventory is the same. And because we already have 225 on order, 203 plus 225 is greater than uh, 250. And therefore we do not place any more orders. The total on order still continues to be 225. Uh, period three, similar thing. The ending inventory of period two is the beginning inventory of uh, period three. Uh, demand randomly generated to be 53. Therefore, the ending inventory is 150 and so on. And here, let's look here. Uh, period uh, five, oh sorry, period six. So at the beginning of period six, 225 comes in. So we have uh, ending inventory of period five, which is 108 plus 225. And therefore, in at period six, the beginning inventory is 333. And we have a demand of uh, 51. Ending inventory is 282. That is clearly greater than 250. And therefore, no more order is uh, created. And so on and so forth. It goes for 5,000 periods. So if you look here, let me scroll to the bottom. Uh, we have simulation for 5,000 periods. So next, let's look at the simulation results. Uh, first, uh, let us make sure that the demand data is not normal. By looking at this, we can, uh, you know, uh, figure out that it is not normal, but still uh, we can use the uh, formal way of uh, making sure that it is not normal using the Shapiro-Wilk method. By looking at the p-value and the test stack, it is very clear that 
the demand data is not normal. So we have now established that the demand data is not normal. The other thing we want to do uh, is uh, look at the average demand and the average lead time. The average uh, demand is um, can be calculated using uh, this distribution. So the triangular distribution has an average uh, which is 40 plus 50 plus 70 divided by 3 and that occurs 80% of the time and 20% of the time it is 0 and therefore the weighted uh, uh, demand is 42.67 which is the average demand and similar for the average lead time. So basically it's just the weighted average uh, of these numbers. So once we have the average demand and the average uh, lead time, we can also calculate what is the average demand during lead time, which is just multiple multiplication of these two numbers. And once we have that, we can calculate what is the safety stock. The safety stock is ROP minus demand during lead time, which is right here. And therefore that is equal to 73. Using all of these numbers and the simulation, the actual inventory uh, in this simulation, or sorry, the actual service level turns out to be 95.34, which is close to what our targeted uh, service level was, which is 95%. So using these numbers and uh, these distribution of demand and lead time, if we have a safety stock of a 73, we will most probably achieve a service level around 95%. And one more thing, the service level is calculated as the number of periods where uh, we were able to satisfy uh, the demand completely. That means the ending inventory was greater than or equal to zero. So here, 95.34% uh, of the 5,000 periods, we were able to um, satisfy the demand uh, in full, and therefore the service level is 95.34%. Now let us look here. Uh, that is here, we are looking into what would have happened had we uh, plopped the numbers into the safety stock formula uh, we saw uh, a few slides prior. That is that formula which assumes that demand and uh, lead time are normally distributed. Even though here the demand and lead time are not normally distributed, it is still possible to just uh, you know, plop the uh, numbers into the formula and get uh, results. So here, doing that, we got that for 95% a service level, which is right there, we need um, a safety stock of 89. Whereas when we ran the actual simulation with the actual demand and lead time characteristics, we just needed safety stock of 73, which is a difference of 22%. So basically, in our situation here, had we just used the formula, we would have ended up with more safety stock than what we needed. Also, uh, just a few quick words on how I calculated uh, demand sigma and uh, uh, lead time sigma for this uh, distribution. I just used a sampling distribution of uh, n equal to 10 for uh, each of the demand and lead times. And in fact, we can see for demand that the sampling uh, uh, sigma numbers is very close to the standard deviation of what actually happened in the simulation. So let's try that out. This is equal to standard deviation population for the demand from period one to period 5,000. And we see that it is 
9968, which is very close to 22, which is very close to the uh, sampling uh, distribution sigma. So we know that what we have done is here is uh, correct. And similarly for uh, lead time sigma and to arrive at a calculated safety stock of 89, which is 22% higher than what the distribution of demand and lead time actually warrants. So to recap, uh, using the often used uh, safety stock formula can be suboptimal if normality conditions are not met by demand and lead time. And in these situations, uh, simulations can help to get to a more optimal calculation of safety stock. And this gets me to the end of this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will be happy to answer. Thank you.